we had uh, proved that the class of context free languages this class is not closed under complementation right and uh, last time we did provide a language example of a language which was not context free in fact that's the very first language we proved not to be context free if you recall a n b n c n but we proved that the complement of that language is indeed a cfl so you know when we say that this class is not closed under complementation what it means is that in general it is not the case that if you take a context free language its complement is going to be a context free language it may be it may not be in some cases of course like for example you take a regular language which is of course also a context free language its complement is also a regular language therefore a context free language so here is an example of a language whose you know the language itself and its complement both are context free here are couple of examples which are kind of interesting that on one side that is the maybe the language is context free its complement is not context free okay and of course there will be languages which is you know each of which is neither context free nor you know its complement also context free so that's also possible so all these cases are possible and the particular reason why we are giving this another example is because uh, this is an interesting example of showing a kind of you know initially a certain language might appear not to be context free but on some analysis it turns out to be context free so this the example today we are taking up is one such all right this language l1 which is ww where w is a binary string this language l1 is not a cfl now what just notice what is this language it is any string w repeat it once more so take any string w any binary string w concatenate that same string with itself so you get ww so a repetition of one string any string any binary string this particular language is not a cfl and we had our good some time back that why this is not a cfl right in fact if you just take w to be a n b n a n b n right so it's a n b n repeated twice where n is greater than equal to 1 that string you know on pumping will be able to get a string which is not of the form ww although that string an bn an bn was of this form and that where where the n that we choose for a particular string for using in the in the for for our use of uh, pumping lemma that n is the pumping lemma constant of the uh, for 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 that language if it was a cfl right so this is this is something we have seen and what we want to claim is that its complement that is l1 complement is a cfl this is what we would like to show and in particular what i would like to do today to begin with is that this particular language what is this language l2 which is concatenation of two strings x and y both are binary strings and the length of x is same as the length of y so concatenation of two equal length strings which are not equal x is not equal to y this particular language is a cfl and this is the hard part 
or a relatively harder part that if you prove this then you should be able to prove that L1 complement is also a CFL. I leave that part as an as something that you can do yourself. So, once more what I am trying to say is that this particular language L2 which is the concatenation of two equal length unequal strings right the language consisting of such strings that is a CFL. How do we go ahead and prove this to be a CFL and this is where I think a little bit of analysis very simple analysis of this condition will help us. So, so what is it saying? So, in fact let us think of a string let us say this is x and this is y. Firstly, it is saying that the lengths of these two strings are equal as you can see I mean I am trying to analyze this all these three conditions and so this is y and the way we have drawn these two strings are of equal length for our analysis that we can see. Now, it says they are binary strings which is okay. So, x and y both are over this alphabet 0 1 and now what does it mean to say that the string x and y they are not equal. Remember what is our task? Our task is to provide a context free grammar G which will generate all strings of this kind that is all strings x y where x and y have equal lengths they are binary strings, but x is not equal to y. How do we go ahead and fulfill this condition? What does it mean to say the string x is not equal to y? Is that is that is the crucial thing. What it means is if you think about it I mean how do you can how do I convince you that this string and this string they are not equal. Supposing I have what is the simplest way of convincing you that two equal length strings are not identical. When I say equal that means identical that means as a string they are not same. If you think if, if you pause for a minute or even less than a minute what it would seem one way of convincing you first of all we are assuming that these are two equal length strings right. Now, take some bit here which is in after b bits in this this bit and the corresponding bit here. So, what it what it means that the bit which we obtain in this string x after skipping b bits right b symbols from this uh, you know starting from the left I move b positions and then the symbol that I get and here again I do the same thing. this length is b right and let me say this symbol is uh, let us say a and this symbol is b of course a and b they are either 0 or 1 and because the two strings so let me write it this is the kind of analysis I am talking of because length of x is equal to length of y right then what it means immediately is that the rest of the bits here rest of the string here the its length is same as the length here is not it. So, the to begin with the two strings are of equal length I am considering the symbol which comes after b bits b symbols from the left here and the symbol b symbols from the from the left in the second string and 
whatever will be left in the first string that length is obviously equal to the length here. So, this is c. Okay. So, now I claim a proof that the string x is not equal to or not identical to the string y is that there is a position after b bits in x such that the symbol there is different from the symbol from the corresponding symbol in string y. This is again not too difficult to see, but all I am saying that your task of providing a proof that x is different from y, you know, reduces to finding out a position in the string x which comes after you know b bits actually this b and this b are different so let me call it this is a and this is a prime right so a and a prime are two symbols and they are the two symbols at a corresponding position that means you know if it is the kth symbol from the left here this is in x a prime is the kth symbol in y from the and that is you are counting k from the left of y all right. Is this clear? I think it should be you know kind of obvious that if I manage to show or find such a a prime such that the two symbols a a prime are not same though occurring I am just saying the same thing in a different way in the same position. In x and y respectively, these two symbols witness that the string x is not identical to the string y. Right. So, this is about this is about our analysis and what then I need to come up with a grammar which will do two things simultaneously. One is that it will generate two equal length strings that is easy is not it that uh, if I if I ensure the grammar generates only strings of even length then clearly whatever it generates it can be seen as two strings concatenated and these two strings are of equal length. So, that part is ok. The harder part is that grammar should also ensure that you know there is some position b in the string x you know this this condition that I have written that the symbol a and a prime are different. And you know as you if you stare at the problem what you see is not immediately clear that I can indeed define such a grammar a grammar context free grammar which will ensure that the two corresponding you know some at least 
for one particular position that the corresponding position here the two symbols are different. You see the point is this because the no one way of I am trying to ensure something about these two symbols. So, you can imagine that I one way of doing that would have been you know generate something uh, you know from here and you see that like as in the case of x reverse that the correspondences between these two can be taken care of provided I am generating pairs of symbols you know starting from the middle and somewhere I make sure that pair is the pair that I generate at some point is different uh, in the sense they are not of they, the pair is not 0 0 or z or 1 1 the pair can be 0 1 1 0 but then that is easy however then how do I ensure that this the other part here you know this these lengths length considerations how do I ensure that that after that we need to generate only c bits here but on the left side we need to generate b bits here. So, if you think about it that approach is not going to work. But you know this this picture if I just do something slightly differently immediately the solution will stare in our face. See this, these are two strings this is of length c this is of length b. Okay. Why do not I do one, one thing instead of instead of uh, the way I have written let me see view this string a little differently. What we are going to do is instead of viewing this part of the string as first a string of length c and then followed by a string of length b why not let me do this first a string of length b and then a string of length c right it, it we are just doing some accounting if you like differently so all i am saying now consider this entire string to be what that first some string of length b that entire string was then a string of length c plus b then a string of length c. Now, I am doing it equivalently as if I am saying that let me count the b part right from here rather than at the end that a length b then this symbol a followed by a string again of length b followed by a string of length c then the symbol a prime then this another string of length c. Okay. So, let me you will first of all agree that I have not changed anything in that string. Uh, however, I am just viewing that string a little differently. So, let me rub this out the old way of accounting. Okay. Now, now the solution is coming out see what is it saying is that I have what I have this this entire string is is a string like this. It is some symbol A flanked by two equal length strings B. I am re redrawing it just. Then A prime, I am sorry, then a string C of length C followed by the symbol A prime, again a string of length C. Now, is not it? This is the same thing, I am just 
named some parts of the strings a little differently. It is the same string, I am viewing it differently. But what is the condition that this symbol A is different from symbol A prime. So, let me write that. Can you see now how this can be done so easily, quite easily? So, essentially generate some string, an odd string. So, this is a string of length 2 b plus 1, you know this is one symbol. So, the 2 b plus 1, this is a string of length 2 c plus 1. So, there are two odd length strings, binary strings and every odd string has a unique center. So, the center of this 2 b plus 1 string, center of this string is this symbol and center of the rest of the string is this particular symbol A prime, right. What we are saying is that the two centers are different. This string, so let me let me let me now summarize. What I am saying is this such a string, what is such a string? A binary string which is composed of two strings of equal lengths, but the two strings are not identical, can be seen equivalently as two strings of odd length, the centers of the two strings being different, all right. Now, once, once we understand that, then grammar for that is comes out very, very trivially. So, first of all, by the way, what is there any restriction about this lengths b's and c's? Do you see that lengths b's and c's are kind of independent? They have nothing to do with each other, is not it? Because if you take a large string, then some bit position is at b here, the same bit position at b in the next string and whatever is left is c. So, you know b and c, so far as in general the set of all these strings are concerned, they are quite independent. And now, let us try to give grammar, a grammar, context free grammar which will generate these strings. Let me define two context free grammars, one which generates, so let me write this two grammars, okay. one generating an odd length string. with center bit zero on the other generating again an odd bit generating an odd length string with center 1. Okay. So, let me say the start symbol for this is S0 and the start symbol for this is S1. So, what are the productions of this first grammar? It is quite easy. S0 can be 0 or a 0 can be 1 is 0 1 1 is 0 0 0 is 0 1 0 is 0 0 so 
if you think about this, this grammar, I mean, I have given the productions and it has only one non terminal S0. Okay. So, the grammar is G1, I said, G1, I am defining it as S0, 0, 1, P. Is 0 and these are the productions or this is the these are the productions and this I am calling it P. Now, it is very very simple to see first of all that it will generate only odd strings right odd length strings and its center will be 0 because why. See you see you know think of let me just give an example. So, let me say 1 0 1 0 1 1 0. This is an odd length string with center 0, center symbol is 0. So, that how 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 do, uh, how are we generating in this? You know start with a 0 and 1 s 0 0 that takes care of the uh, two outermost thing then 0 1 is 0. So, these two are gone then 1 1 is 0 and finally, 0. So, the final is 0 which is replaced that gives the center right and that is always 0. In the same way we can define another grammar. The grammar for this is going to be very simple, very, very similar, obviously identical, almost S1, 0, 1, P1, let me say, and S1. And S1 is 1 and S 1 is you know other things are similar S 1 1 1 S 1 0 0 S 1 1 0 S 1 0. Okay. So, G 2 will generate odd length strings with center 1 for the same reason as we have given. And now, imagine that I have I combine these two grammars to have one single grammar and uh, right. So, what I am going to do I will have these all these productions at the same place. Okay. And we'll add. See what is what is our goal? Our goal is to generate an odd length string with some center bit, and then generate another odd length string whose center bit is different. So do you see this is going to work? That my new start symbol is S. S I will say first you either you first generate an string which can be derived from S 0 followed by a string with center 1 odd length string with center 1. So, that will mean that somewhere this A is 0 this A prime is 1 or it can be right and then my grammar is therefore, will now have 3 non terminals. So, the actual G that we derive is S, S 0, S 1. This is the set of non terminals and followed by set of terminals is of course, 0 1 and 
then I have this new set of productions P prime which is all this followed by the start symbol S and remember P prime has this as well as all this. This is your P prime. and this is the grammar. Now, I claim L g L g is what the grammar L 2 that we wrote that set of all strings x y such that length of x is equal to length of y right x is not equal to y and x y are both binary strings. Language generated by this grammar is indeed that language that we had earlier called L 2 and by analysis our analysis and our way of viewing it we got fairly simple grammar actually is not it to generate this language which is concatenation of two equal length strings which are different. And since I could generate this language using a context free grammar this language is a context free language. So, now we will consider uh, another topic, another subtopic of context free languages is about their decision algorithms. Now, what is what is a decision algorithm? A decision algorithm is an algorithm which solves a decision problem and in turn what is a decision problem? A decision problem is a problem uh, which will have yes no answer you need to decide given the input you need to decide yes or no. For example, in case of context free grammars that your input is usually will be a grammar or a pair of grammars or a grammar and a string. So, so example decision problems. for CFLs. So, let us say one is um, given CFG G as input is the language generated by G infinite. So, if you say yes that means, L g is infinite if you say no L g is finite. Similarly, given C f g g is L g empty right. So, this is another decision problems, there can be more given G a CFG and a string X is X in the language generated by the grammar G and of course, let me take another or two others given G is L G is equal to sigma star where the grammar G the input alphabet is sigma another given two C F G's 
g1 g2 is lg1 equal to lg2 now for a moment let's instead of cfg think of uh, regular languages in, in in other words instead of context free languages we can of course we could have posed the same problems for the class of regular languages so there for example uh, something a problem like this will be given a uh, dfa m as input is the language accepted by m infinite again given a dfa m is the language accepted by m empty and so on and so so for example last would would be that given two two dfas m1 m2 is the language accepted by m1 same as the language accepted by m2 now if you go back and remember what we did for regular languages all these decision problems for all these decision problems we could given for each of them we could given algorithm so in fact almost everything that we think we could think of as decision problem for regular languages we could give an algorithm to solve that decision problem in case of the this class context free languages the situation is very very different in fact we will indeed be able to show or give algorithms for these decision problems and for these last two one would be able to prove later on if we if we if we do a little more of this course that these there are no algorithms to solve these decision problems so you see what i'm trying to say is whereas i will be able to provide an algorithm to solve let's say any one of these first three decision problems when it concerns context free languages for the other two for example here what you are uh, asking the question is it seems very innocuous that here is this grammar g over with generate strings over an alphabet sigma does it generate every string of the alphabet sigma and interestingly that there is no algorithm no an algorithm at all for solving this decision problem similarly given two context free grammars do they generate do both of them generate the same language again there is no algorithm to decide this question and such decision problems are called undecidable problems which when we do turing machine will be able to go deeper into the class of undecidable problems so right now let us provide the positive results that's all we can do let me provide uh, algorithms for 1 2 and 3 so the first problem is you are given so the first problem is that given a grammar cfgg is lg infinite actually the simplest simpler simpler thing let me start with which is the second problem given a cfgg is lg empty now uh, one kind of uh, one algorithm follows uh the proof of that proof that we had seen of uh, pumping lemma 
for both 1 and 2. But let me give you a more direct algorithm for G which actually we have done. So, you recall we had provided an algorithm for the following problem that given a CFG G and given and for A which is a non terminal of G does A derive any terminal stream. And uh, remember that is this one way of supposing in other words actually I should have said uh, we can we can write this or we can symbolize this this way that is there a w w is an element of sigma star. So, sigma is the input alphabet of G. So, is there a W? W is in sigma star such that this non terminal A derives this string W, right? If we go back, we will be able to remember this algorithm. If you do not remember right away, the idea was that we kind of iteratively figure out all those non terminals which generate terminal strings and uh, at some point of time, we will be able to discover all those non terminals which generate terminal strings and then if this non terminal A happens to be in that set of non terminals which generate terminal strings, then I can say that this A does derive a terminal string that was the idea. Now, you see for a grammar G to be empty that means what? S does not derive any any terminal string at all, right. So, you know I can just run through this same algorithm for the input grammar G and if I find that the start symbol S does not derive any terminal string, then clearly the grammar generates the empty language. So, that is the that is the that gives us the algorithm to solve this decision problem. The other two we will take up in the next lecture and this one also will be quite simple. In fact, we have done most of the work for this. This is a very interesting algorithm which we will provide. So, in the next class we will continue with this topic decision algorithms for CFLs. In particular, we will provide decision algorithm for problems 1 and 3.